Between the plates lies a matrix of a million individual and minute cells, each one a fraction of an inch tall. Across the top and bottom layers of the glass are hundreds of thin electrodes crisscrossing one another. Their job is to create an electric environment that charges a mix of inert gases that will soon fill up those cells. The gases are called neon and xenon. Once charged with electricity, they create plasma. Most people imagine there are only three states of matter, liquid, gas and solid. But there's a fourth, plasma. And believe it or not, it makes up nearly all the visible matter in our universe. By charging certain gases with electricity, it's possible to create plasma. And this plasma transmits light. So how do you recreate the northern lights inside a TV screen? First of all, fill it with neon and xenon. This tiny glass tube is fitted to the back of the screen by a robotic welding device. Using the tube, air will be sucked out and a gas cocktail will be pumped in. A short trip to an airtight section of the factory where the gas is stored. This is where chemistry meets engineering. The screens emerging from the chamber are full of gas, but there's one problem. Charged neon and xenon only generate ultraviolet light, invisible to the human eye. The solution? Another clever bit of chemistry. Each cell has been coated alternately with a red, green and blue chemical, called a phosphor. So each pair of glass plates now contains a matrix of microscopic electrical wires and a honeycomb of minute cells, each filled with neon and xenon, and now delicately coated in various kinds of phosphorus chemicals. All that's needed to make the plasma do its stuff is the flick of a switch. This technician is creating a kind of electric storm right in front of our eyes. As an electrical charge surges around the components, the screens burst into life, and a plasma TV is born. This explosion of colored light shows the phosphors and the plasma are working. Now it's the job of the electrical circuits to combine the right cells to produce the right colors. Plasma can identify a million colors. That's more colors than the human eye can recognize. I think plasma is a great technology. But a TV that runs on gas with a little help from electricity poses peculiar problems. In a normal TV, you don't want faulty electrical circuits. In a plasma TV, you don't want a gas leak. So the screens visit the aging room. In here, hundreds of plasma screens are switched on and left for hours to make sure the chemicals are contained and stable. The plasma screen is working, but there are no pictures yet. There are no tuners, no receivers, no aerials. There's still a plasma TV to be built. Generating sound and vision involves thousands of individual components. Stored on reels of plastic, they're fired at high speed onto circuit boards. High-pressure plastic injection machines produce the various casings for the different sizes of plasma TVs made here. Then everything is brought together on the production line. Circuit boards which control the signal, the power, formats and tuners are all placed on the inner back wall of the TV. But right now, the screen has a poor contrast ratio, giving off a kind of milky grey light. So another screen is added to increase the contrast.
then everything is checked again. Color bars make sure each TV is producing the correct colors, whites and blacks, rather than muddy grays. Test patterns, formats and functions all need to be assessed. These guys at least get to watch the front of a TV screen. Spare a thought for Satoshi Maruono. It may sound like robotic bedlam, but to Satoshi's trained ear, the chirps and squeaks tell him if the TV's working as it should. And some tests involve a highly technical process. He's listening for loose screws. Satoshi sees the back of hundreds of TVs every day, and he'd much rather be watching the front. I love TVs so much that I make them for a living. I don't have a plasma TV myself yet, but I do dream about getting one. After packing and boxing, a few TVs are chosen for one last bone-shaking quality check. Every now and again, a television is taken off the line and subjected to a spell in the vibration chamber. A metal floor plate shakes the TV to make sure everything is screwed together properly and that there are no loose parts. When you open your TV's packaging, Everything should have been shaken, but not stirred. As the workday comes to a close, the TV sets are loaded onto trucks to be shipped around the world. Box upon box of cosmic plasma destined for your living room. The plasma technology behind your flat screen TV is now also used in manned space flight as a propellant in spacecraft thrusters. Back in the factory in Japan, the day shift is over and the workers have gone, leaving the plasma sets switched on to dream quietly of the northern lights in glorious technicolor. Five ordinary objects, five extraordinary stories. Sunset over New York. It's July the 4th, one of the biggest dates in America's calendar. Independence Day. Excitement fills the air. New Yorkers make their way to the dockside for a front row seat at one of the biggest shows on earth. the most gigantic firework display. All of the world, people love fireworks. Um, nobody likes it more than the people in New York. We're convinced of that. For days, a team from Macy's department store has been coordinating a massive operation involving engineers, TV crews, police, and city and government officials. We deal with so many city agencies and so many people that work for those agencies, outside vendors, volunteers, all told there's about 5,000 people that need to come together and be on the same page for this. A lot of effort for one of the biggest shows in the world. The vision of this man, firework designer Gary Souza. For me, the, the first few aerial shells that go in the sky, I am just totally thrilled. To me, that's the best moment in the whole show, because then I know that things are going to work. Susan knows he's only going to have one chance to